Hello, everyone. Hopefully it starts working. There we are, live. Live. I never know how much of a delay there is. But anyway, hey, welcome back to the Punky Show or the Punky Rooster Show or whatever this is called. Um, I'm your host, Punky Rooster. Funny that. I think my head got fatter because um, my hat doesn't seem to fit as well anymore, but um, it won't, I won't let that get in the way of our fun today. So today on the, uh, this episode, we're going to be talking about four major things before I inevitably tumble into uh, insane ranting. Um, number one is uh, there was some tree damage that I found, my itty bitty little tiny trees from rabbits, some that I didn't bother protecting, and I paid the price. Um, hopefully not the full price, hopefully just a little discount price. Uh, I think they're okay, but we're going to talk about how I'm protecting those trees. We're going to give a bonsai garden update, kind of what I'm calling the bond cheese. Basically, my attempt to bonsai every conceivable vegetable, uh, typical vegetable plant. I got some updates on that. Um, it, as part of that, it'll be sort of my general cloning updates as well. Uh, the indoor decorative gardening. So gardening. So this is a new project that I am working on um, in its very beginning stages. I'm going to kind of just run through and talk about it, but we're going to be doing more in-depth discussion of this much, much later. Um, so in episodes to come. But for now, I just want to do a quick introduction to the project because uh, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be beautiful. And number four, of course, the typical topic of every gardening video, YouTube, streamer, whatever out there is, uh, you know, what am I growing in 2021? Coffee sip. Uh, and we're going to go over some of the plants I bought. Now, typically, for the most part, I'm focusing on the three sisters, very sincerely, um, with a couple of additions of plants that will be just nice to have for the family. Ooh, I just hit my desk. So let's get to the poor trees. Oh! Okay, so I have these trees that are outside the protective fence because my backyard is fenced in. And a lot of my my fruit trees are not in that fenced in area, but they are themselves encased. They're, uh, one, they're much larger, generally speaking. And they have a cage around them of welded mesh, of welded wire fencing. Or at the very least, if they're kind of big trees and I'm less concerned about the deer, then I'm only protecting the trunk from bunnies, which I use actually... It's worked out really well. I've had them for a couple of years now like this. I'm protecting the trunks actually by wrapping it in um, a sc like screen, like window screen. So that, um, I forget what it's made out of, but, you know, it's uh, it's it seems very delicate, but it has protected my trunks from obvious damage like this. So this is unfortunately one of the willow trees, the hybrid willow trees. So a hybrid and poplar I have planted in my back in back of my backyard, sort of on the edge of my uh, my property and my neighbor's property, and they're unprotected. They're not within the backyard fence. I didn't give them any kinds of protection. Basically, as soon as I had them out there, the will the poor willows were eaten down by by uh, deer to basically little stubs like this, which I'm not too concerned about because willow comes back with a vengeance. So we actually both these plants. Um, they're the two fastest growing trees. So it, I'm not too, too concerned. They're, they can survive a lot and they're easy to clone as I discovered. So I have clones and this, this is exactly part of the reason why I started those clones. And I'll give you an update on those clones later as part of the bonsai garden update. But um, the, <laughs> I wasn't too upset when the deer chomped them down. But as soon as I went out there and I saw bunny damage, I was getting really nervous because I was afraid they were just going to eat it to the nub, to the ground. And it would probably still spring back from the roots, which should not necessarily be a bad thing. But I was like, okay, I should, I should protect them. I should do something here. So to protect the, the smallest of the nubs, I have, these are actually a uh, five gallon um, hydro bucket, uh, hydro net cups, I guess you'd call them. I don't know if they're really cups, they're more like net bowls. Uh, they're made for hydroponics, like um, deep water culture that you do in a five gallon bucket. They fit perfectly over a five gallon bucket. But I haven't done a five gallon bucket deep water culture hydroponic system in a long time. So I've had these for years. I've been trucking these things around from, from house to house since I since my first house, to be quite honest, long before I was on YouTube. Um, and I didn't really like working with them, but that's a whole other topic of conversation. But I was like, you know, I need something. I didn't have materials. I don't go anywhere right now because of the pandemic. I try to avoid going out so as much as possible. So I had to use what I had here. And it's the end results are pretty hilarious. So one, the smallest nubs, I did this. 
pull it over, pull it over the top, held it down with these like ground anchors that I have for camping and whatnot. And theoretically, bunnies could chew through this plastic, no problem. But I'm not too, too worried, you know, in the grand scheme of things. So I did have some hardwire cloth or, or fence. I don't know what you'd call this. Um, I guess it's hardwire cloth. Very, very small holes. I didn't have a lot of it in a very good shape, so I had to be really particular about what I did. Hey there! Hope you had a great week. Nice to see the hydroponic bowls. Yes, absolutely. Fortunately, I'm not using for hydroponic. I'm using them for tree protection, but they're still getting use. So, so anyway, I I took this this uh, the hardware cloth and just wrapped it up the best I could. In some cases, this nub was a little bit too tall for the net cups or the net bowls or whatever you want to call them. Uh, so I I just took some some hardware cloth, wrapped it around, used some wire to hold it in place, and there you go. So again, not the best protection. If you really want to protect your trees, get some of that window screen. You know, you can pick it up in huge rolls, cut it to whatever size you want. I actually found a really good roll. It's actually for vent screening, um, but it works really, really well because while theoretically something, it's not like hard, it's a, what is it, fiberglass? I'm not really sure what window screen is made out of, but it's, it feels like a bunny could chew through it if they really wanted to, but just the fact that it's in the way, it's like it bothers them and they just don't even touch it. So it's easier to work with than hardware cloth. Um, it has great breathability because it's screening. So I highly recommend it. So not the stuff I'm showing. Fortunately, I didn't take a picture of the actual stuff, but if you've seen my old videos of me protecting, and I'm sure I'll talk about it next year too because I'll be doing it on more trees. But wrap the trunk in that in window screen. It's a great way to protect from bunnies. Um, so let's talk about the, the bonsai garden. So originally I started as doing bon cheese, bonsai, bonsai chili peppers. But honestly, my chili peppers are not looking fantastic. Those are obviously the ones to the left here, the six cups to the left. They look really anemic. I've moved them over to a high quality soil. This is like expensive, fancy pants soil. Not specifically bonsai soil because we're not dealing with you know traditional bonsais. It's an ocean farm. Uh, I think it's Ocean Farm. I always forget. O ocean, because I might be thinking of Fox Farm. Uh, that stuff. <laughs> it's pretty good stuff. I was able to order it online and have it shipped for relatively cheap. And it's pretty good quality soil. It has guano in it. It has lots of other good stuff, worm casting. So it makes for a really good soil. And I want like a nice nutritious soil to get these plants started really well. But man, these the peppers are sad, man. So, so sad. Hey, Wildly Canadian. Didn't realize I was still on my personal channel. <laughs> Cannot wait to see if uh, we're able to prune those veggies into bonsai. Yeah, I know, right? I'm really excited because, okay, so peppers, it's been done to death. A lot of people have bonsai peppers. Bon cheese are a thing. Um, they look like little tiny trees, and they're pretty easy to do. But I'm So that's almost a given. Like, I'll be able to do that no problem. The question is if I can keep them small and productive, which is the question for all these plants, which I'll talk about in a minute. Now, off to the right are two different kinds of, of string beans, so or green beans. There are neither of which are green. So string beans, one is red swan, which produces a red pod, and one's purple dove, which produces a purple pod. So I think those are really beautiful. If I can su successfully bonsai them and still have them be productive, that would be a really, really beautiful presentation because... Because I can never do anything that is not at least a little... I'm too utilitarian. I can't do anything that is just purely form, I need it to have function too. So part of my goal in this is bonsai vegetable, what I'm calling kind of like the bonsai vegetable garden, because I want to do this with a lot of different kinds of veggies. Basically every veggie I can get my hands on, I will try to bonsai it in some way. But I want to see if I can not only bonsai it, but keep them productive. And I don't know if I'll be able to do that. I don't know if, because it's almost counterproductive. Like you see bon cheese with tons of peppers on them. So that seems possible, but will it work with other one, can other veggies be bonsai at all? Like just in a form sense, in a beauty sense, in a decorative sense? And two, will they remain productive? Because if I can successfully bonsai a variety of vegetables and then keep them in small pots, product productive, healthy in small pots through very, very intense pruning, very selective pruning, um, I think that'd be really cool because that could allow me to start growing more food in a much smaller space, which is a huge part of the new vibe and the, the theme since I've moved back to a smaller property. I don't have a lot of room. So 
so those are the goals. That's what I'm like reaching for and, and trying to accomplish. So, so yeah. Um, I'm excited to see how these go. Now I've ordered some new, uh, seeds. A lot of the seeds I have are old. I got rid of my really, really old ones, but to be quite honest, even the seeds that I have are old and still a lot of them were before I started refrigerating them and keeping them dry and cold. So, um, I went ahead and ordered new seeds for this coming garden, this year's garden. We'll talk about that in a minute, but some of those seeds that I got, I will be trying, I'll be saving some aside to see if I can bonsai like the corn. So before we talk about that, though, let's let's keep going across the uh, back back room uh, little growing shelf. I just recently ordered some more materials to set up another wire rack, so I hope to have a lot growing here. Now, I'm out of grow lights because I'm using the vast majority of my grow lights from Hidden Harvest out in my greenhouse right now for the, for the winter garden. That's going fantastic, by the way. I don't have a specific update for that because it's just doing its thing out there. And I've moved the blackberry plants that were traditionally kind of part of this indoor update. Those are out in the greenhouse as well. So I, so anyway, so I have, um, here you can see a, a mix of things. So the one is the habanata, which is in the, the right, right above my head. Um, that I put a nutritious soil substance. It's one of my most mature pepper plants at this point. So very small. These take a while to get going. Um, Chinense peppers in general take a long time to get going. They usually take a long time to sprout the seeds, to germinate, a long time to get up to a good size. But once they get big, they get big um, very quickly and get very productive. So it's okay. But again, the, the leaves are a little off. Um, I don't know. There's something off with my peppers, but this happens to me, honestly, with peppers. So I'm not too, too concerned about it. Um, we'll just have to see how it goes. Uh, stage center here is uh, actually a lemon tree that's looking pretty sad. I used to have a lemon tree. I think I've even done videos about it in the past on my channel. They don't work out for me because I can't have them outdoors, even in the greenhouse, because it's still too cold in the winter to have like an outdoor citrus tree. Indoors, the idea sounds great, but I can never seem to have them be happy. So I have, I had a really big one at the last house that I ended up giving away because it would, it would just have a moment where just all the leaves would drop and die. Um, or it would put flowers out and then all the leaves would drop off and die. And then it would re-sprout or, or re-branch out new leaves, look beautiful, maybe then again flower again. But the flowers would all fall off, then the leaves would all fall off. It was this constant cycle that I could never seem to like master. So I'm like, I never want a lemon tree again as long as I live. This one I got free from Stark. No, um, I think I got this one free from fastgrowingtrees.com. They had like a promotion. So I got this and I'm like, Ugh. so it's been sitting in my front window, slowly dying. And I was like, all right, I should do something with it. So I cut it way back. It was like this big, tall, spindly thing. I cut it way back and stuck it in a little uh, little pot. <laughs> um, what is that? I think that's like four and a half inch pot, something like that. And gave it some good soil, uh, cleaned up its roots a little bit. Basically gave it the, the bonsai treatment, both top and bottom, above and, abo and below the dirt. And uh, I hope it does something. I might turn it into a bonsai just because I have it. Um, and I really don't know what else to do with it. I don't care to have it as a full tree. Now to the left, uh, looking a little sad as well. All of these things look a little sad when I'm moving them over to soil, it seems. But um, these were looking sad before I moved them over. Are Those are all the cuttings from the, the poor willows, the hybrid willows and the hybrid poplar that have been devastated that we talked about in the first segment in terms of protecting them from bunnies. Those are, every single one of those, those clones rooted I got them in their own separate pots, in this case, case uh, red party cups, solo cups, um, which is very popular, especially with like pepper growers, I've noticed. seems like every pepper grower on YouTube uses these. So they do make fantastic, you cut a couple little holes in the bottom on the sides, they make fantastic little pots. And you can fit quite a few of them in a 10 by 20 tray. Um, so I've got these moved over into the solo cups with some nice soil, not the crappy soil that they kind of, well, they didn't start out in soil. So let me correct that. I, I sprouted them in, in coconut coir. And that's part of, part of why the 
the lower leaves look so bad is because there was no nutrition. I tried to give a little bit, like titrate a little bit of, of nutrients into the coconut coir, but it just didn't really work out. So, um, so that's part of the reason why the lower leaves look so bad. And I knew I had to get them into actual nutritious soil, like actual something, something with some substance. So I went ahead and stuck that in and, um, called it good. <laughs> And they're looking a little sad, but but they're still alive. And the important thing is that they're I have the, I continued those genetics just in case those trees get destroyed by deer outside, get destroyed by deer in bunnies. I've got excuse me, I've got um, I've got the plants continued. Oh, and here's another look at those. You can see some of the deadish leaves. All right, so now we're going to talk about the new indoor garden. Um, decorating with gardening. I don't know what you want to call it. Interior design gardening. We have this sh shelf. This is what we call the rainbow shelf. This is a built-in shelf-like thing. It appears to be load-bearing. <laughs> Hopefully not, but it kind of looks like it is the way it, the, the, anyway. So let's not get into architecture. So um, these, the house I, I moved into is very strange. Let's put it that way. But all the houses here have this. These are cute little shelves. When we came in, it was just kind of a mess. So we cleaned it up. We had the fun idea of splattering like rainbow colors. You can see it goes through seven different colors. Um, but basically these shelves, despite taking all this time to make it look pretty, just accumulated a bunch of junk. So we wanted to correct that by actually um, doing something decorative with it. And my wife was like, well, why don't we grow something there? And my daughter was like, yes, I want something like fruit and whatnot. And, and she was suggesting like blueberries and like blackberries. And I'm like, Oh honey, there's like, no, those are all very big fruiting plants. So I was like, how about strawberries? So what I've ordered and not all, not everything has arrived. So I'll talk about this a lot more in the future as we set it up. But, um, for now, at least I'm only getting the, the, the top five shelves. So the red through light blue, the two bottom shelves will remain junk shelves or something. Uh, where we need to easily access um, access things. Uh, but the top will be mine. So what I'm actually going to do is I bought some planters. I think they're like 17 or 18 inch planters. Um, they're kind of like window planters, but they're made for indoors. They come and have little drip trays. I'm going to put one in each of those. Now those top two shelves are much bigger. So probably what I'll end up doing is I'll put the planter boxes in the center and eventually maybe I'll put it on the sides. We'll have to see how it looks. All right. So, but the base for each is the 17 or 18 inch. I can't remember, uh, planters and those will fit <clears throat> one in each of those little colored squares. Uh, I, I kind of went back and forth. I'll be filling that with a nutritious soil, the, the Fox farm, nutritious soil, ocean, um, ocean forest, ocean forest. I think that's actually the, the word I was looking for before. I'm going to be filling it up. And I also ordered some strawberry planters. So we're going to talk about next my uh, seeds for 2012, uh, 21 garden. Since I was ordering, I went, it was like, you know what? I'm just going to throw a bunch of uh, ever bearing uh, strawberry plants because not only do I want them for this new project, actually I want to pl plant, uh, plant even more strawberries out in the, the garden, in the perennial part of the garden. So I was like, I'll go ahead and get these now. I'll spend the money. So I got Seascape, Albion, and Eversweet because those are all um, ever-bearing and productive varieties. And uh, we're growing them indoors, so the climate doesn't really matter as much. But uh, so each of those will have, a th uh, obviously, again, I'm not going to use all of these, but I'm going to plant a few of each in each pot in these different things. Now, for lights, I went back and forth because I looked at, I wanted something that I could sort of link together, daisy chain together so that I could effectively, hopefully use, just plug them all into the wall with one plug so I don't have tons of wires all over the place. Because that'd be really nasty if I used like a traditional separate light fixtures or even grow lights. Um, so I had to really think about this. I also didn't want to spend too, too much money. And if you're buying like five different grow lights, that can go crazy. So for starters, and it may not work out, I'm being realistic. I bought some of those, those LED strips that you could peel off the back strip and you can cut and use jumpers to connect it. And basically what I'm going to do is lay out for starters, two of those strips in, on the top. So basically, um, tape them to the top of each of these squares and, uh, hopefully ultimately link them all together. 
maybe maybe do two different two different runs and we'll talk about this in the future so just i'm just gonna rant here and just try to visualize but it's um i think that might be the best way to provide some light i don't want anything too overbearing because this is kind of like our living space but it needs to be enough light for like the plants to be happy and be productive so i'm walking that fine line and these led strips I've seen people use them as grow lights, believe it or not, pretty successfully for indoor growing. Um, they don't seem like they'd be bright enough, but it seems to work out. Um, so JT Bear is the person in mind where he actually took those strip lights and he stuck them to PVC pipe and then hung the PVC pipe kind of like, uh, uh, like they were individual like fixtures. So it's hard to explain, but... And he had a lot of like, I mean, there were seed starts, but he grew some pretty big, like big little peppers under there. Now, not to fruiting level, so that could be a problem, but we'll just have to find out. And if it doesn't work, I will just spend the money, get a bunch of grow lights that kind of somehow fit there and I'll figure it out. Um, but I've always kind of wanted to play with those LED strips. So like, why not? So those are the strawberries I'll be going for. So just to remind everyone, this is what my container garden will look like next year. 106 containers, two levels. You can see at the lower left-hand corner, it's two tiers. So there's 20-gallon pots in two rows, well, four rows total. And then each of those two rows of 20-gallon pots stacked in the middle is going to be a line of 10-gallon pots. So I'm going to have a lot of soil to work with. Um, so the the outer each of the outer um 20 gallon pot rows on the very outer edges of the garden those are all perennial so more i'm going to take those whatever's left of those strawberry roots i'm going to shove more in there somewhere that's all strawberries that's all rhubarb that's all asparagus those sorts of perennials that just aren't going to survive out in the wild so to speak because they'll be destroyed or overgrown easily those are taking up those pots the inner rows are going to be my annual garden, which is going to be effectively three sisters. Maybe with some slight alterations, but sticking pretty close to the, the, the three sisters gardening. And I'm thinking the 10 gallon pots will probably be those other things that don't necessarily fit in with the, um, the three sisters that I want to be growing to. And we'll talk about that in a minute because I bought more seeds. Now this time I went from Burpee. Typically I don't buy my seeds from Burpee. I don't have anything against Burpee. Like that's actually what is usually available in stores when I buy seeds in person, believe it or not. I'm not ordering them online. Um, but it's not typically what I go to. Like historically I've gone to rareseeds.com. I've tried to move more of my business to Johnny's Selected Seeds only because it's a, it's a main company. So I got to support my home state. And, um, and they usually have a, a different variety. So the problem with rareseeds.com is that they do focus on some weird, rare heirlooms, which is really awesome. But I'm moving away from those and embracing some more uh, reliable varieties, things that are not just like novelty, things that I know will produce. Because I've, I've done the novelty weird heirlooms for many years and... It doesn't really work out. It's not always in line with having a nice productive garden. You know, results may vary, of course. So, so we're going to talk about the three sisters. So the main sister, the first sister is going to be corn, always is corn. Now, traditionally it would be like a dent flower corn situation. I'm going with a sweet corn because I know my family will eat this. We're going to consume this like crazy. So I got an early variety that was also very sweet. And I just kind of selected one at random from burpee seeds. So there's nothing particularly interesting. Um, rareseeds.com was, does have, um, and I actually forgot to mention this, that did have a really fascinating baby corn where it grows very small ears, two ears on a, a, a plant. Um, and that looked really fun. But the, the reason why I ended up going with burpee is because both rareseeds.com and Johnny Selected Seeds were, were, um, we're offline just due to the pandemic, due to the volume of orders that they're getting. They were both offline when I was ready to order my seeds. And I was like, okay, fine, whatever. And I'll go over to Burpee because I was thinking about getting the strawberries anyway. Um, so for my beans, uh, I went back and forth about whether or not I wanted to do runner beans. And I still have some runner bean seeds, so maybe I'll start some. But I was like, okay, well, 
are we going to eat runner beans? We might. We might eat them as fresh beans. We might eat them as dried beans. I mean, I like the idea of having dried beans. I grow dried beans like every single year. But usually I grow just enough to have enough seeds for next year. But it's like, all right, let me this year grow something that I know we're going to eat because my family does like to eat string beans. Um, and if I grow too many, instead of saving these off, I'll just let the pods mature and then I'll have shell beans because you can eat, of course, the seeds of, of uh, good old your typical green beans. So of course this is a pole variety so that it will grow up the corn stalks. I'm going to try to be good about staggering the growth of all these plants. Um, so we're going to try it. We're going to try this as our, our second sister. Now, in addition to that, um, I, my family also loves sugar snap. So I saw these super sugar snap, which uh, I do believe grows in a vine. I don't think they get to be very tall vines, but it is a more of a vining plant. So I may grow this alongside the green beans. So every, every, so every one of those 20 gallon containers will be a three sisters garden. I'll have two or three corn growing, maybe just two corn. I'll have, you know, a, a bean plant and a sugar snap pea plant growing up the corn. And then coming out the bottom, the third sister. Well, I'm thinking about doing these, these pumpkins. And I've been thinking about, so the problem is I don't eat a ton. Historically, I don't eat a ton of winter squashes. Like I love like a yellow squash, like that summer squash, love it to pieces. But um, it doesn't really, I didn't know if it would really work and it's not traditionally what is used. And I do want something that will last. So it's like, I need to venture into the, the winter squash world. So I thought about having pumpkins. Um, so we could grow these, maybe make some pie out of them. I'm thinking about roasting them and eating them as they are. And hopefully it'll be a nice, nice roasted pumpkin too. I honestly don't know. Um, and it'll be a nice thing to eat in that way that you would eat, normally eat a winter squash. Because at the end of the day, pumpkin is just a winter squash. And also the seeds. Love having pumpkin seeds. So I'm going to give this a try as a, hopefully it'll be productive. They're relatively small because I don't want anything huge. I want like single serving little, little, little uh, pumpkins to consume. Um, but with all things considered, I'm hoping this, this works out as a sort of my third sister winter squash. Now we're getting into the weird stuff. So my family also uh, asked for a few other things. Now I won't necessarily be growing these in the three sisters. These might end up in the, the 10, one in each of the 10 gallon pots. So I have cantaloupe because um, my wife and my daughter love cantaloupe. I'm eh, about it. So I kind of just chose one that I thought looked good. Oh, and, and just to say, this, the reason why I got the sweet sugar pie is because I wanted a sweet pumpkin. I don't know if I made that abundantly clear. Um, I also have bought these seeds actually in the fall. So Johnny selected seeds when I ordered some seeds for my winter garden. I went ahead and got these just because. I probably should have waited to get them now, but I'm glad I didn't because Johnny's wasn't available when I came, you know, so it's a good thing I got them early. I got a variety of seedless watermelons just for the heck of it. So I'm going to be growing out perhaps those in the 10 gallon pots as well. Maybe I'll switch these out for some pumpkins and let them be kind of like a third sister. The watermelons be a third sister in the 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 Three Sisters Garden. I'm not actually sure because I don't know if I necessarily need, um, what would it be, 36 pots? Do I need 36 uh, pumpkin plants producing that many pumpkins? I'll never get around to it. But if I do half, you know, pumpkins, the other half uh, watermelon, you know, maybe that's the best bet. Um, and of course, broccoli. Uh, very big fan of kale in, in our household. Um, but we've kind of moved on to broccoli and historically I've not had a great experience growing honestly any brassica. I always have a terrible experience with brassica, but I was like, you know what? Um, you know, we're eating a lot of broccoli now, so let me go ahead and get some broccoli and let's see if, let's see if I can do something with it. Uh, and of course I got some more half long carrots. These, um, I actually bought these from Johnny selected seed and it's what I have growing out in the, um, winter garden. And they were doing really, really well. So I'm my, my, um, how shall I say this? My confidence in growing carrots is increasing. Historically, I've not had great luck with it, but it's increasing. So I'm going to go ahead and get one package of these and see how it goes. And of course, finally, this is not going to the Three Sisters Garden, but um, my daughter and my part-time other child, my ward that we're taking care of um, during the, the, the pandemic, they both want kind of their own garden. And 
they want to grow really big pumpkins. So Burpee actually has a larger pumpkin than this, but they were out of stock. So I got the Big Max, which can get up to 100 pounds, probably is not going to, because I'm not going to do anything crazy to keep these things going. Keep them alive, keep them healthy, get them fertilized, but I'm not going to baby them. Like, uh, hopefully I can keep them safe from from critters. I'm probably going to grow, build a fence around their garden, because we're actually doing their pumpkin patch, separate from my container garden. We're actually going to put these in the ground. So I've basically, that gigantic pile of wood chips that everyone said I would never be able to use them all, I've used them all. There's like one tiny little pile off to the side that I'm going to be using as a mulch for my containers. So I saved, intentionally saved some. But the rest is nothing but, a, a, you know, a few inches kind of like in a big area. And that that remaining cover is basically going to be the pumpkin patch. So I'm going to take that few inches, move them aside, plant out these Big Max pumpkins, and we're going to hopefully, hopefully have a nice big pumpkin patch where the giant wood chip pile was. All right, that is all I had. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I really appreciate it if you like this video and a share would be very much appreciated too. That's the best way uh, that I can get the word out about my show. And especially now that I'm doing the weekly live show and putting you know a lot more thought and effort into it these days, I would love to be able to get more people watching it. And the last couple ones I've done, have gotten a lot of lot of interaction. Some of my best for live shows because a lot of people don't like live streaming here on YouTube. So it's as a live stream and also a video after the fact. Whenever YouTube decides that it is done being a live video and they kind of turn it into a uh, video on demand, a VOD. Um, that is a. Uh, it's been awesome, and and I don't know what it's been. It's ultimately up to you, awesome people. So if you can do anything to help, you know, again, comments. If you just want to, you, you, even just a comment, you know, if you want to tell me about what you're growing in your garden after the fact would be amazing. Hey, great, great sky control. Hello, how's, how's that going? Um, I don't know what I was about to say there, but I also want to take a moment to say a huge thank you to my patrons on Patreon: uh, Mark, Mallory, Paula, Catherine. Um, been supporters for a really long time. These days, I only use the Patreon. I don't do special posts on the Patreon. I basically leave there as an, op an option for people to treat it like a tip jar. Like, I used to have a bunch of different crazy levels with, like, different prizes or whatever. And I, did, I got rid of that because it was a weird stress to try to, like, maintain a hundred different things. Um, like, it's nice to have a route for people to be able to contribute, but... It seemed like duplicate. It just it just wasn't a positive thing, generally speaking. Uh, and of course, not everyone's on Patreon. So I um I kind of got rid of the higher levels, got rid of all the special things. And if you want to go on there and 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 give me you know um, uh, be a patron for one to three dollars a month, your choice. Those are all the levels I have: one, two, and three. And some people have been doing it for a lot. Some people were supporting me at high, much higher levels when I had them. And you people are crazy supportive and I really appreciate it. But I felt like I couldn't provide the right content at those levels or the right level of to make it worth it or to make it feel like I, you've earned your money. And I know ultimately it's about support, but blah, 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 blah. So those who are giving me a tip every month, I really appreciate it. I appreciate the support um, immensely. And I know it's you've you've been supporting me for a while now, so I want to give a thanks, and I hope to, I hope to do more at the end of these videos to give thanks to people who contributed on Patreon. Uh, at the in, at the in the description of this video, you'll see a list of all the different ways you can help me. Of course, watching this, sharing it, liking this video is one of the best ways, uh, because the more viewers that come, the more YouTube goes, hey, this is a valuable video. We should have more people see it. So that's the best way you can help. Absolutely. Um, but I also have a, an Amazon link that you can click on before you buy anything on Amazon and, and I'll see a, a cut of that and no extra money to you. So that's awesome. I also have a link to my novel. Um, and also just, if you just want to PayPal me some su mon financial support, I would definitely appreciate it. Um, people have done that in the past and I've, thank you so much. And I usually end up, so for example, you know, uh, CMT, SDM, single-handedly made sure that I had bees this year. So they um, were incredible. And that was that was a PayPal donation, if memory serves. So that's there if you want to help me out in that way. Um, I'm going to try to stream to, to Twitch as well. Trying to do both at the same time was a little bit difficult, but I may, I'm thinking about after I get done here, I may try to move over to Twitch 
They basically do the same thing. It's like a second second act or something like that. Maybe. We'll see. But in any case, blah, 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 blah. Thank you all so much for who uh, joined me for the live show. Hi. Um, and thank you to support me on Patreon. And thank you to everyone who's watching this after the fact. I really appreciate the support. I love doing this. I love sharing my adventures. And I love this format for doing it. Um, but in any case, thank you so much for watching. And as always, thank you for joining me on this journey.